The building blocks of urbanism are things that started many, many tens of thousands of years ago. One of them in particular is language, the possibility of speaking, not only to communicate information, but also to think about things that are not there, like the past and the future, both of which are entirely imaginary constructs, but for which we have the language to be able to envision something that is not there. Even more important is the opportunity to put in a conditional tense, not just a past, present, and a future, but a what if. If we build it, they will come. That kind of planning is something that was absolutely essential, not only to our long human survival, but to the eventual possibility of living in larger and larger configurations of strangers. Another thing that humans are very good about is dealing with objects. We're the only species that has stuff, and certainly has so much stuff, and we have been trying to invent new things since the very beginning. The first artifacts of any detailed aesthetic consequence were from about a million and a half years ago. And those artifacts were made in quantities that suggested that mere utility was not enough as part of the human composition of making the world around them, of making tools, for example. The first artifacts were things called hand axes, and they look a little bit like the two palms of your hand put together. And we'd have a hard time making one even today with our sophisticated technical skills because it requires a certain amount of imagination to turn a stone over and over again and manufacture them without hurting yourself. And the amount of work that goes into these objects is far beyond what would be required to make a useful, sharp-edged tool. In fact, there's been some interesting thought about the way that people manufactured those hand axes, not only to be something useful, but to be a kind of social calling card. Hey, baby, look at my hand axe. <laughs> Another thing that's really important for humans and that has been part of our makeup for a long time has been migration. So more than a million years ago, our ancestors walked out of Africa and into every corner of the old world. That process of walking is still there. Migration is not a new phenomenon. It's a human phenomenon. And the last thing that humans do that became a precursor for the kinds of things we needed to become urban is the development of architecture, of not just accepting the world as it is, of being able to find a shelter under a tree or in a cave, but to actually make structures that suit people, not only for shelter, but also as a kind of social calling card, as a way of putting together a household and making it visible to the rest of the people around. So those are the things that are the kind of building blocks of what it took to be able to be urban. But many of those things were done for tens of thousands of years before people actually became an urban species. And the first move towards getting people into larger and larger groups was probably something that was a ritual impetus. The idea of coming together and gathering with a bunch of strangers was something that is evident in the earliest physical ritual structures that we have in the world today. So you see here Stonehenge, which of course is very familiar to us and very picturesque and evocative. And then you also have Gebekli Tepe, which is probably the world's earliest ritual structure in Turkey, uh, made by hunter-gatherers who were coming together and constructing these upright stone circles over and over again to be able to make a place for people to come together and have a ritual. And we know archaeologically that these are places where people came repeatedly over and over again. They came, they had celebrations, they had fires, they did cooking, they interred their dead. And all of that was very exciting, including probably also people coming along with trinkets to sell, or also you know, people coming along for a little romance. 
you know, down in the village where there were only 50 or 60 people at any given time, marriage prospects were probably rather limited. So the idea of going to a ritual event um, you know, was something like a festival atmosphere so that you could have a little shopping, a little ritual, a little romance all at the same time. But there was kind of a catch about these ritual centers, and that is that after you were done with the ritual, you were supposed to go home. So when we think about places like Stonehenge, we think about places like Gebekli Tepe, there are still no cities anywhere near them. So it took something more in order to be able to get people to live in a place that was kind of like a permanent festival atmosphere. And once that started, once you had a kind of economy of people living together, of all kinds of new opportunities for romance, for education, for medical care, that's when the first cities got going. <laughs> 